All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've told you about him. We've been hitting about him, saying that, hey, man, we finally going to get him on the show. This guy is in his sixth year in the NFL, his second season right here in Pittsburgh after re-signing this offseason out of the University of Memphis, number third at five. My cornerback, yes, Mr. Arthur M., Mr. Arthur Marlett, man, first off, baby. I appreciate you taking time to jump on the show with us, man. And I love your name. If anyone's never told you that, I want to tell you that every time I see you, I love your name, okay? I appreciate it, man. You already know. You already know. But um, let's just start at the beginning of this thing, man. What went into you joining the Steelers uh, last season? Yeah, last season, um, 2021 season. Um, it was solid, man. Um, I, I, it was a culture shock for me, honestly, too. Um made me really love football again because mm. I was uh, a lot of people don't know I was last year was going to be my last year playing football but kind of fell in love with it again and um, obviously they extended me and I'm taking advantage of every opportunity that I have dude that is why was it going to be your last yeah, year yeah um uh, honestly just just um coming from um coming from the jet uh you know just being a journeyman as well um just busting my butt and not really seeing anything, you know, to offer from it. Uh, you know how the league is sometimes, yeah. you know, they, they pay, they pay guys and they're going to play them. Right. Um, and I was just a guy like, you know, if I'm gonna put my all into something and I'm not getting what I want, then um, it's on to the next thing. But like I said, uh, signed with the Steelers on a reserve contract last year. Um, and Mike T kind of took me under his wing and told me like, what position you play? Cause I didn't have a true position. I played outside corner. I played safety, mm -hmm. never played inside. And uh, he was like, nah, you're going to be a nickel. And, you know, fell in love with that position, learned, it, learned, learned a lot about it last year. And, and I'm enjoying it now, man. And, uh, and like I said, I found the love for the game again. Dude, we're glad the heck. We're glad as heck you found that love again, man. You definitely been helping us out in a major way. Yes, indeed. And you talk about culture shock. What do you like most about whether it's the Steelers organization? Or just the city of Pittsburgh compared to the other stops that you've been thus far in your career? Um, honestly, bro, it was uh, when I first got here, you know, you know, training camp was big and all this stuff. I was so nervous because, you know, one thing about Pittsburgh Steelers fans and, and you know, the ends at all, they, they don't they don't play about football. You know, you got to nah. come and you got to be able to play, you know, <laughs> That's the truth. Um, and, and, you know, with that being said, um, I got into training camp my first year with the Steelers. And Mike T, the first day after practice, Mike T is putting people on a big board, and that's one thing I love about the Steelers, man. Uh, yes. You're not gonna, you're not gonna <laughs> go, you're not gonna be playing, or you're not gonna be in a building not knowing your role, knowing what you have to get better at, not knowing what to do. You know, um, other organizations, I'm not gonna call out any names, just like that, you know. But with the Steelers there at your front door with it, you're going to know why you're playing and you're going to know why you're not playing. You know, like Mike T says, it's either JV or varsity. So I can respect that as a man and as a hard worker, you know. So that's why I love it. Now, and now you talked a little bit um, a little bit earlier about switching positions, right? Because obviously mm -hmm. when you were in New York, man, you played a little bit of safety. We know you played outside corner yes. as well. And now here yes. you've predominantly been at the slot. Do you yes. have any preference, though, on those positions? And <laughs> what would, like, the challenges for you in terms of just switching and stuff like that? Yeah, man, that was a big challenge for me, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I mean, because it's night I and love, day, so to speak, man, when you talk about that inside versus outside, and day, man. Bro, it's night and day, you know. I'm not saying outside's easy, right? But I am saying it from the receiver splits, mm -hmm. from the releases. You only get two releases, <laughs> right. and you're only getting certain <laughs> routes at outside corner. But when you get in that inside, it's it don't matter what the release right. is. He can run anything, right? <laughs> so you have to you have to be more about where's my help at, where's my leverage at, what am I, what am I, what can I give up and what mm -hmm. I cannot give up, right? And that's the nuances of the game that I had to learn by playing in the inside instead of outside. Outside, I would be like, you know what, I'll play everything at seven yards, three, three, five steps from the quarterback. I know if I get three steps from the quarterback right now, mm -hmm. it's going to be intermediate route. If I get five step drop back, it's going to be it's going to be deeper down right. the routes. And if he releases inside, we're going to get this. If I release, if he release outside, I'm getting that right. It was that simple at that corner. But at the nickel, it's, it's knowing where you help at the nuances of the coverage being a mini linebacker being a cover guy as well you know and you know just knowing what you have to do in that defense 
Well, and I would also say the communication and the the physicality, right? That that team. <laughs> yes, ex- exactly. Yeah, and, no. and when I watch you exactly. on tape, man, you're one of those dudes. You never shy away from contact. I mean, wait, I saw where uh, I think it was Coach Tom had introduced uh, the Mike Hilton tape to you. Right. And when we watch you, man, you are very similar in terms of your physicality, your ability to just get back there and make these type of tackles and stuff like that. Has that always been something that you've taken pride in? Yeah, man. Um, ever since I've been in college, I've been a guy. I was a boundary corner, obviously. So, mm-hmm. you know, you know, you have to be physical in the boundary because that's where you're getting the runs. That's where you're getting the quick slants. That's where you're getting all that fast mm-hmm. twitch stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it kind of just rubbed off off my game of college and just being in the league and just being physical. And then I was a Juco baby as well. So, oh, <laughs> we so you didn't got it out the mud, drill. out the mud. <laughs> yeah, awesome. we did the whole Oklahoma drill. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Lay on your back. Lay you, your back. Hey, you don't need no water. You got to be a man out here. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that just just the upbringing of my football career, you know, um, I had to always play physical and I was a man of man guy. So, you know, it is what it is. Now, nah, respect that, man. Respect. Now, we know coming out of Memphis, man, you didn't get drafted and stuff like that. But ultimately, just talk about that NFL draft experience for you and ultimately what led you to signing uh, when you signed uh, coming out of college and stuff. Oh, man, um, it was crazy. Um, I was projected to get drafted, actually. The reason why I didn't get drafted, <laughs> it was my first time running the 40. I got a late combine invite. I was mm. nervous as heck. <laughs> um, and, and tell you know, the people how that works, too, man, in terms of running the 40. Is it? It's not just about being fast. It's a science yeah, to this not, thing, man. <laughs> like, it's exactly like you see a lot, all these guys running 4 threes and 4-4s. Four mm-hmm. You'd be like, why is he not – Man, it's like, this honestly, is... I, I got in the starting blocks. <laughs> I got in the, my starting stands, and I popped straight up, and I ran. Oh, you act like you racing somebody, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I didn't. Look, I didn't. <laughs> I had no chance, bro. Like, it was over with. Yo. And I'm in my draft draft meetings and stuff. They're like, are you going to run a 4-5? You going to run a 4-5? You know me. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, what? I got four, that. Five? Yeah, that's nothing. That's... What? Man, that laser broke my heart, man. It broke my heart, bro. I ran a 4-6. Oh, no. Uh, I ran a 4-6, man. Then, you know, obviously we go do the pro day. I run like a four, a low 4-5 and a 4-4-9. But, you know, they don't care about that pro day. Oh, you no, know no. They, once they, you put that they, combine out there, that combine it's over. <laughs> It's in the bloodline, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm at UB's, man. I remember like it was yesterday. It's this little um, little um, wheat place in Memphis. Mm-hmm. And I have like a little small draft party. I'm thinking I'm going to go like fourth or fifth round. Um, didn't get drafted. So I had a party. Didn't get drafted. And it was just back to the drawing board for me. I was a priority free agent. I signed with my hometown in New Orleans and played two years there. And then that's how my career jump started. I was a teamer for three years. Signed a reserve contract with with the Jets. Played two years there. Teamer started playing corner. Started playing safety, and you know, just from there, signed with the Steelers, and now I'm here. And now he didn't got that Rhea, baby, about time, yes, baby, about time. Oh, Lord, life Still changing. Still backtracking. Got Let's more work go. to go. Oh, you already know, man. You got to get him for everything. You got to get all that back pay. Yes, you sir. better believe that. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Who has been your biggest mentor throughout your NFL career thus far? My biggest mentor throughout my NFL career so far. <sighs> ah, wow. Y'all might not believe me, man. Um, I was a journeyman, man. So honestly, like I had good mentors um, when I was in New Orleans, like Ted again, um, mm, Chris okay. Banjo, uh, a, a lot of other guys, right? But um, honestly, um, the way I was a journeyman and stuff, I just had to kind of be my biggest critic by myself, you know? Mm um being on a lot of teams you know um trying to trying to win a starting position like i'm not going to be a nice guy and be like hey yeah tell me what to do like i'm trying to take a spot so i just had to be my biggest critic and and kind of keep god first and just keep working hard and and just knowing that like being disrespectfully but truthfully honest with myself on what i needed to get better and got me into the place i am right now now, with that mindset, too, because I love that mindset, has that helped you when you're talking about staying motivated, though, through all of that, through the ups and downs of, all right, do they believe in me? What is my role going to be here? All right, now I got to switch to right. over here. Being as critical of yourself, being as hard on yourself in certain elements, has that been able to help you through that, too? Yeah, man. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that that's taken me so far, man, because I'm not a guy that 
gets high off of having a good game, right, and be like, oh, yeah, I'm here, I have arrived. Um, you know, it could always be worse, you know, it, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know what, um, you got to clean up this. Even though I have good games, it's something that you always have to get better at, you know what I'm saying? And then you're getting scouted by other offenses too as well. So it's just kind of like, bro, that's cool and all, but on to the next thing, you know? Mm. So I just always try to get better every week, you know, um, just critiquing my game. Even now, even though I'm playing well, like it's still critiquing. What else What else can I, like Coach G say, put eight pounds in a five-pound bag. Like mm. I'm just trying to see what all else I can get better at. Because at the end of the day, like, someone's always coming for your spot. Thanks. And I was that guy. I was always hungry. I was always like, okay, you don't want that rap? I'll take it. So it's just <laughs> I need like, all that. Let's you go. know? So it's just like, you know, with that mentality, I just have to keep it that way and, and, and be my biggest critic. And if I don't know what I messed up on and my coaches are correcting me, I feel like I didn't do a good enough job of lowering the scheme and knowing what I needed to work on at my position. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because it's a professional, it's a professional thing. It ain't like, oh, we in college or we in high school. It's a professional. This is my job. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I have to take the ownership on, oh, I messed up on this. All right, I need to look at it and make sure it doesn't happen again because it's the NFL, man. You'll be gone in a heartbeat. No, that's the truth, man. Hearing you speak, man, you sound like a guy that's been out the mud from a small school. I know I'm a JMU dude, so wasn't all okay. the way juco but i feel that energy so when yeah, i'm listening man. i'm like man talk about how you even ended up at memphis man like were you a big time recruit like what was going on with that situation Ooh. as well so a lot of people don't know my story i don't really tell a lot because i don't really care about the sympathy and all of this and all that but man um I but, but context matters college. though man um, context matters it do, but come on it now. does but it does but sometimes it doesn't man at the end of the day i'm i'm blessed to play in the nfl and and to play as long as I'm playing right now. Yeah. Um, uh, I didn't only played one year of high school, didn't play my senior year, dropped out, got my GED, walked on to junior college. Um, it was a Mississippi Juco. So I think that's where my mindset came okay. from. It was a, it was a 55 man roster. So it's kind of similar to the NFL. So 55 man roster, but the, the kick was, it was only four out of staters on each spot. And I was an out of state. Mm. So four on defense and four on offense. So I had to compete for a job Already from the get-go of, of playing Jeez. football. Exactly. That's a whole other so, mindset you know, right there. It, exactly. So I think that's what started my mindset of like, yo, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Like you're always going to be competing against somebody or somebody's going to always come and get your spot. Mm. So just coming out of JUCO, you know, got, got made the 55 man roster, but they had guys from Illinois getting in trouble, Miami getting in trouble. So I had to go against division one guys on getting a spot for out of state man spot you defense. sound like you went the last chance you over there man god damn <laughs> no look last chance bro it's crazy no you, you're gonna be like what last chance you before they started that series i left juco the year before they started that series oh wow so so east mississippi was yeah. like our rivalry east what? mississippi <laughs> that was our rivalry i went to copia lincoln so okay first, okay that, that first uh, first season of that show, we wound up beating them. <laughs> wow. We wound up beating East Mississippi in it. It was pretty funny. I was like, dang, man, I could stay one more year and I was <laughs> on TV, man. I've been on Netflix. <laughs> Yo, that's nuts right there. Yeah. So, you know, um, like obviously we was talking, you know, um, 55-man roster injury goal made it, played two years there. And that's when I started getting my offers my second year. Um, had like 25 to 30 offers. But, mm, okay. you know, I wasn't a guy that – was in school a lot. Obviously, I told you my story about right, right. only playing a year, GED, right, having to walk on the JUCO. But, you know, I didn't qualify for a lot of SEC schools, so I had to stay another semester to go ahead and uh, try to get this Division One scholarship, so I wound up signing to the University of Memphis. My first ever um, visit, my first signing, so I didn't go anywhere oh, else okay. once I visited them. You were just um, sold. I just like, okay. Yeah, I was sold because I was coming from Juco. I'm like, we get protein, we get this, we get housing. We man, get I got that. a sweatsuit in like, this man, bag. Come on, we man. Good. I'm on the dotted line. <laughs> Better. We good. So, wound up doing that, man. Playing two years at Memphis, and it was the best thing in my life, man. It made me really figure out, like, yeah, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, you know. So, played two years there, wind up. You know, undrafted now six years in the league. Let's get it and counting. Let's go. Yes, sir. So <clears throat> you kind of hinted at it with your mentality and going around and 
being in different teams. How did you feel in particular, though, about being on a squad? Because you look at your story online. You're, like, on a squad, and then they'll, like, cut you. You'll be on practice squad, and they'll get you back to the roster. Or maybe, like, an injury right, happens. exactly. Yeah. Take me through those moments and your reaction and what's going on through your mind. Um, Honestly, bro, um, I know y'all probably seen it. I got cut eight times, right? Um, A lot of the times I got cut, it wasn't because of my ability to play. It was more a guy getting hurt or, oh, we need this guy to come up. My mentality was stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Mm. You know, and also the eye in the sky don't lie. So if I'm working my butt off, once that film turns on they're going to see somebody on tape that has quality play you know what i'm saying so i was always just getting ready for the, my time to play because at the end of the day things happen organizations play pay guys more and that's fine and i tell a lot of guys like bro i was in your same position like just work hard and then when you get a time to shine bro that's your time Take for your hard work to pay off mm-hmm. right so it's like but if you're not working while the time that you're supposed to be working they're going to see that, and then you're going to get overlooked. So it's just one of those things where I was like, okay, that's cool. My body's going to be fine. I'm going to be working my butt off, and I'll be ready when they when they call me. You know, it's just one of those things where it's like, like I said, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Oh, man, I love your mindset. It sounds, yeah, it sounds like it's a good learning lesson across the board or like, something seriously. to take to heart. Don't take things personally because obviously you're not Yeah, because, yeah, like, I mean, you that's know. That's not easy to do, though, man. That's that's not easy I to mean, do. It's it's not. And I had to learn that, too. But, you know, guys had to tell me, like, bro, like, you know, there's guys getting paid more than you. Right. And, you know, an organization is not going to want to look crazy by trotting you out there and you not even making plays. And they got this five star guy that's been a five star his whole life, been drafted and he's supposed to make those plays. Right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So this is one of those things where it's like, bro, when your opportunity comes, take it. And don't give it back. That was always my mindset with it. It was just like, when my opportunity comes, he's not getting the spot back. <laughs> that's that's simple. plain and simple. Simple. Once I get on the field, <laughs> you can't get it back. <laughs> Once I get on the field, you can't get it back. And that's still my mindset to this day. Once I get an opportunity, I'm not getting off the field. Let's go. Let's unless go. I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm just being go. honest. But you're right, though. That's how it has to be, man. Unless you're one of these highest paid in the room or first round draft pick you're absolutely right man it is exactly. that type of mentality then, otherwise you don't last and, and and i'm pretty sure both of you guys know man like it don't matter y'all seen four rounders get mm-hmm. cut fifth rounders sixth rounders sometimes even third rounders get right. cut right right so it's just like everybody should have that mindset once i get on a field don't give it back <laughs> and that's my mindset Till I'm done. Straight like Til that. Till I'm done. <laughs> Straight like that. Now, we did talk about you re-signing this offseason, man. Was that an easy decision for you, or did you consider potentially going somewhere else, man? Um, Honestly, it was an easy decision for me because I'm a loyal guy. Mm. Um, I just felt the Steelers See, because in a all position. Arthurs are loyal. Y'all hear that right there? <laughs> all <laughs> Arthurs are loyal. Y'all heard I, that, man. I can agree with that. There we go. There we go. Nah, but honestly, I just think it was just loyalty. I was just big on loyalty. Like, I could have chased a little bit more money, right? But just being with a team that gave me an opportunity to showcase a lot of my skills, it was just like, bro, it's like, it's no it, 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 it's no negotiation there. Like, I just feel like I owe the Pittsburgh Steelers. I want to finish to be a Pittsburgh Steelers. I want to retire Pittsburgh Steelers because they finally gave me an equal opportunity to show my game and show my ability to play football. No, I like that. I like that a lot right there. We got a couple more for you, man, before we, you know, let you get up out of this thing, man. But, um, oh, yeah, we good. You know, number time, man. I, I, I do need to know, man, because we always talk about, you know, different matchups, man, who you playing, this guy that you got to cover, that guy that you have to cover. But for you, man, who was the toughest player that you've had to play against in your career? Oh, um, <laughs> that Williams guy from the Chargers. I hate him. Mike Williams. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, God, I didn't God. think he was like that. Yeah, what's going on? Bro, you got to think about it. If he, that's a six what, He's six tall. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. super tall. In the slot, yeah. In the slot, that's crazy. Like, that's That's, 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 that's tall. That's very tall you know in the slot. You're right. You're right. That's very tall in the slot that can run 4-4, four, four, kind of four, low 4-4s. Four, four, yeah. Can jump. Got you're a right. high catch radius okay, okay. in the slot. It's pretty tough, man. 
just I being honest. That. Okay, okay. I didn't even think about that type of matchup, but yeah, that could definitely do yeah, it. Yeah, you know, and, you know, and then, you know, slot guys, you know, they're smaller. You know, we're combat. Yeah. We're smaller guys, you know. So to see a big guy like that in the slot is like, whoa, okay. Are you an ex? <laughs> hey, what's going on <laughs> like, here, man? What's you doing in here? What's you doing in here? <laughs> Spot, See, I, I, it is refreshing to hear that DBs do feel that same way because that's how us linebackers feel whenever you know we match up. And it's like, bro, why are you in here? What, what are you doing at the three <laughs> position? You, my, you oh, are right. not supposed to be in here. Can I get some help, at please? All. Yeah, yeah. Right, I, mm. like, bro. <laughs> I, and it was crazy because, like, I, I was with the Jets at the time. And we were playing, like, like cover one. And he was just running. He was man, running big man. box. Ooh. Man, man. He was running, bro. He was running big box phase the whole game. Big box phase the whole game. Big. I'm like, bro, <laughs> you serious right now? <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, that that that's that's but a nightmare. Him, I can see that. Him and him and Keenan Allen in that slot is is not fun. I'm yeah. Be honest with you. It's, it's, I like it. Good. I like it. Respect. All right, so I do got to ask you, man. Y'all got the Eagles coming up on Sunday, man. Just when you watch them on tape, what are some of the things that you see that present challenges to you guys defensively and some of the things you think you'll be able to have some success at without giving too um, many secrets, though? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that they're, they're a really good pace team, right? They're going to try to get you to move around and, and, and not play technique football. That's why they, they try to pace a lot of people. Um, I think we're going to be good also because – I just think that they run a lot of one side plays because mm -hmm. of they have a huge RPO game. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get too deep into right, it. Right, right, right. We, we picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, they, they, they're they one sided team to, to the quarterback's throwing on, yeah. you know, um, RPO type of team. And I just think we can play fast, you know, simple calls. You can't, can't be in too much. I think we're going to be in a lot of match coverages, you know. Um, to match those things up. And, and all of the fans right now that are on the chat listening to you, they all calling that you're going to get an interception this week as well. <laughs> big, big time support. Especially we got this dude with the fish momentum. He loves you. He's like, yo, tell Arthur he's getting a pick this week. All right. So I just nah, want to go ahead and put that it, in. Man. And they, they, they big I on you right now. Yeah. Nah, I appreciate it. Um, I was supposed to have at least one last week, man. Just getting a little bit more comfortable, getting my eyes back around in the slot, you know, just playing a little bit more stickier. So, you know, um, yeah, the third time's the charm. So they try me over the middle. I should get one this week. Well, and I like the fact, too, man, when you talk about the coverage element of it, being in position is the first part. You are exactly. doing that. Now, now we yes, just get exactly. to the finish. Now Absolutely. Get, yes. Absolutely, so, you know, man. Just, like I said, being my biggest critic, man, just breaking down that film, just, you know, seeing what I need to work on and stuff like that. That's the next phase for me to take the next step and make some plays and get some splash on the film. Let's go. Now, can you talk about us in-house? Because we got a lot of people, a lot of fans, you know, media stuff. They think the sky's falling with this team. But we had Montrevious <laughs> Adams on just a couple weeks ago, and he felt like hey, he's kind of like you too. He's a journeyman. He's been with other teams. He was like, "Bro, I've been around. This doesn't feel like what our record is." So can you? Because you got y'all got to think about it, man. Like, mm -hmm. okay, we lose to the Jets, right? And We've been saying that's this. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We lose to the Jets. That's a close game. We lose to the Patriots. That's a close game. You know, um, the only two teams that really beat us, honestly, was the Bills and uh, the Browns. I'll give them two good games, they right? Following, you, know, yep. we, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Y'all get what I'm saying? Absolutely. So it's just like we're close. We just have to finish. We're close. We just have to finish, you know. Um, and I think we're going to do that, man. I think we're going to turn it around, man. You know, it starts this week, obviously, by going one and no. Um, then we, we do that going to the bye, get healthy, and, and, and keep the train rolling from there. So I think we'll be fine. I don't think the sky is falling. I just think that we just have to play all three phases, complementary football, you know, um, on all three phases. That's the biggest thing, man. We can't have – we can't let each other down. Yeah. That's all. We'll be fine. Nah, facts, facts I on like that, man. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Now, this is the final one that I have, man, and you know – I feel like all of us go through this, and I hate to bring up any past trauma, but we got to do it. Oh, no, you good. You to, good. To, so, so, you know, you got to talk to me, man. Can I hear about your welcome to the NFL moment? You know, everybody go through that phase. It's like, oh, okay, this is different. This is, we here now. We in the big leagues, baby. <laughs> yeah. We, we, welcome <laughs> to the NFL moment. Yeah. Hmm. I was, uh, 
I was running off on TikTok. I like how we always bro. start this with a laugh, too. Everybody that starts is like, oh, man, actually. I was running. I, I was actually on kickoff return. And I was playing against Tampa Bay. Mm. And this is when I was in New Orleans. It was my first year. And, you know, I'm thinking special teams. I'm like, man, I ain't that like that. It was just cool. special teams. I ain't teams, about yeah. that, right? You know, <laughs> I don't need to. I feel like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a defensive guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> team. I'm, I'm a corner. I don't, don't cover no kicks. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, I ain't going to block somebody. That ain't about nothing. Just get in this way. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the four on this one, right? Oh, that's and a big body. Not a double. Yeah. It, 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 that's exactly. a big body. You said a four. That's 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 the interior part of that covered unit. So yeah. I got the four, and I look at, I look mm-hmm. at the four. Them fifty numbers, them linebackers. That's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fifty five, fifty seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm about to say, I know what we so yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I look inside. And I see 57, and he look at me he like, I know you blocking me, boy. I know you blocking me, boy. And I'm just like, you too big. <laughs> so and and you running. can't cut block on special teams either. Throw that exactly. out there. You can't cut you block. You got to take yeah. the charge. So mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just try to take the charge a little bit, just get in this way. Man, I'm running down there on KR. I'm running down there, running down there. I get to the 30. I flip and turn. 57 blows me up. <laughs> And all I see is just a Superdome, Mercedes Benz, yeah. scoreboard. Up. <laughs> I see the Superdome, scoreboard up top. And I see trainers after that. Oh, concussion. no. Oh, concussion? concussion. Yo. Wow. For the rest of the year, for the rest of the year, guess what? Double team, double team. <laughs> Man. I yeah, yeah, man. Uh, whoever your special teams coach is down, they they did you a disservice on that particular call right man, there, man. Man, man jeez, man. that was my that was really my welcome to the NFL moment right there. Like yo. I was like, yeah, you got to get in the weight room, buddy. Yo, that is funny <laughs> right there, man. <laughs> All right, this is the official last one. The chat loves this question. This actually, this is in relation to a Kevin Dotson comment from last year. I think he tweeted out like he could take down a cheetah one on one. So we've been asking everyone that we have on. Do you think you could defeat a cheetah one on one? As in tackle limit? No, no, uh, no, no. This is like a fight. Hey, hey, think, think, View it as a fight. I'm fighting. No for weapons my life. on you. I'm fighting, fighting for my life. No weapons. No cool. weapons. Hand to hand. You got hand him. Hand to hand. I'm gonna punch it right in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, I'm a run. Zigzag. Oh my god! Zigzag. <laughs> <laughs> That's the so, first strategy we've heard. I'm about to like say, that. I, yeah. I, I like your mentality, though. Yeah, you could tell he didn't thought this through. He's like, you know what? Yeah, I'm a socket in the nose, and I'm a zigzag <laughs> out of this thing, man. I just feel like he all got- animals have <laughs> sensitive noses, right? So I'm just like, you know what? I'm going for the nose right here, bink, and I'm gone. I got, I got 30 seconds because he can make. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got 30 seconds to go. In 30 seconds, I'm out of there. That's my plan. Hey, what if it's in an octagon, though? Uh oh. What happened? Now, what no, what if it's in an octagon? Now you what, can't, what if yeah. it's like a cage match? Oh, what if it's in an octagon? Yeah, you, you, you so got to sit there and fight. No, okay, so this is what I'll do. I'll punch it in the nose, and then when it's trying to get like his mind right, I'm going to choke it out. I'm gonna choke <laughs> it out. <laughs> Either way, you are believing you're taking down the cheetah. So I like it, yeah. I, I think everyone else is giving questionable responses. I was you, about to say, right your, off your the confidence bat, you're is like, I'm taking them down. Yeah, you you are definitely the most confident in terms outside of Dotson. You are the most confident in terms of taking on this cheetah. I was very skeptical of the cheetah. I'm worried about the teeth and the claws. But granted, you I'm are faster than me. You got that. that. Your lateral movement That's, is better are, than mine. They my, are I don't have that. Than us, but he said an octagon. So yeah. I'm gonna line you up. Okay. Okay. I might put the boss clean on and. <laughs> okay. 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 Give him a little action. Give him a little action. All yeah, right. All right. You know. Okay, okay, line okay. Up, man, then choke him out. For sure, for sure. What about a lion? <laughs> now we should go to a I'm lion. I'm not messing with a lion. Uh, I'm going to just be okay, like, that's no, the line. She does the line. Then. Got uh, me. There got we me, go. Bro. There we go. You got me, bro. <laughs> hey, got man. Me. Once again, though, man, we definitely appreciate the heck out of you, man, taking some time to jump on the podcast with us, man. It means a lot. And like I said, man, we big supporters of you, man. You know, already know from a, from a name standpoint, we rocking yeah, with you sure, as sure, well, man. man. Appreciate so, that, man. Appreciate like I said, that. man, keep doing your thing. Stay healthy, man. And you take care of business on Sunday, baby. Oh, yes, sir. Appreciate y'all for having me. Man. No right, doubt. Peace, bro. Peace. All right.